Hey guys, what's up? My name's Chopper, and recently we've been hearing a lot about Modern Warfare coming out, so the campaign of this game is evidently going to be the most realistic and, and, and I guess, controversial campaign that Call of Duty's ever done. If you wanted, you can make the argument to say that, you know, a lot of the most recent Call of Duty games have been very on the rails, and you could, you could even say sanitized, maybe to some degree, and it looks like what Infinity Ward wants to do with this year's Modern Warfare is get rid of that, throw that out the window, and take the campaign in a brand new direction. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to compare it to as BO4, of course, as you guys know, did not end up having a campaign. Although there were rumors going around to suggest that the BO4 campaign would have been like a two-player sort of Black Ops 3 kind of style thing, where it was a little bit more open world and uh, dependent on your choices. But we were never really going to know because we'll probably not see it. Either way, let's go with what Infinity Ward is saying. Let's take their word and, and how they want to go a little bit further with this campaign and giving players choices in order to affect the story and the overall mood about what's happening. And from what we know of people who've played the game already and spoke about it, or what Infinity Ward has said about their own game, is that the basically the player choices that you make are inherently tied to the outcome of the story. Now, whether that means like there's going to be a significant amount of endings or you know branching storyline, that sort of thing, that, that's not entirely clear. There has to be at least some some kind of on-the-rails aspect to it. That's how Call of Duty campaigns always are, and that's how they have to be. But the idea here is that the choices that you make in-game are going to affect the overall outcome, and, and instead of, like, killing either teammates or, or other, like, civilians, and then the mission ending and then restarting, apparently what this campaign is going to have is, is you have the freedom to do any of those things, but you have to live with the choices. You have to live with the consequences that come with that. Now, you might have heard about a little bit of one of the missions inside of Modern Warfare where you have the choice where there is a mother that's going to cross the room to try and pick up her baby, and, and genuinely, you have the choice to shoot either of them, from what I understand, and so that is going to affect the overall mood of the rest of the mission, and so it seems like whatever happens as a result is something that you have to live with the consequences for the rest of the campaign, from what we understand, and every mission, to some degree, is supposed to be like that. Now, in every Call of Duty campaign that I can remember recently, like, the, the idea is that you are fighting on the side of good, and you are clearly fighting the side of evil. That's that's typically how it's always been, and it's been very cut and dry. For the most part, you know who the bad guys are, and again, for the most part, you know that you're the good guy as well, and the game makes it very clear that that's the case. But with Modern Warfare, that doesn't seem to be what's going to happen. I, I guess that what they want to do in this campaign is really try to blur the lines between good and evil, where you're not necessarily sure if your actions are justified about what you're doing, and then that combined with the fact that the weight of all the decisions you make can make for a really cool experience. But this has come under a lot of criticism recently, because some people don't think that this can be pulled off. I think the idea that they have is that this Call of Duty campaign is going to be like a truly open and free choice-like world, where literally every action affects another thing and it's all like this you know a super elaborate chain of things that can happen that's not exactly how video games or call of duty works it, it has to be on the rails to some degree but what i appreciate is that this is going to be the most you know open choice one out of all of them and so this probably will be the most quote-unquote open world campaign that we've ever played and uh, will you know depend the most on player choice but i also want to keep people's expe expectations about this realistic because you don't you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment of something that's you know technically or genuinely not possible and so naturally what that leads into is from the other playtesters and people who have tried out the game for themselves, the level of violence that apparently is in this campaign is, is, on, is on another level that Call of Duty's never seen before. And I find that a pretty interesting move for them to take this year. Call of Duty, for the most part, has never been terribly violent, aside from like a couple of very particular moments, you know, such as No Rush and in a couple of moments in Black Ops 2 that I can remember. But it seems like they're completely doing away with all of the, the, the sanitation of the rest of the COD games and just going all out with this one. And from what a lot of playtasters have said is that the Modern Warfare campaign makes missions like MW2's No Russian literally look like a Pixar film. And so that sets up some pretty high expectations about what this, you know, how visceral it's going to be. From what I've been told, the level of graphic violence and, and, and all the detail that it's in, people are surprised that it doesn't get an adult-only rating instead of rated M. And, and Call of Duty's never really even teetered on being an adult-only game. And so, you know, the probably the worst it's gotten was MW2's No Russian. And even in its time, that was 10 years ago, it still caught a lot of flack for that very particular mission. And so if, if every mission is going to be just as, for lack of a better word, edgy as that one was, that probably means that it's going to end up getting banned in certain countries as previous Call of Duty games in the past have got banned for that very reason. And so what you have to ask yourself is why would Infinity War do this? If they if they know it's going to get banned in some places, they know it's going to, you know, catch a lot of media flack and, and people are going to be upset with it, then why go for that? My guess would be that this is their viral marketing strategy. They, they 
they want people to, you know, talk about and, and be feeling how visceral this campaign is going to be. There's a reason they probably haven't showed off any gameplay yet, and I doubt they're going to show off too much before we even get our hands on the game ourselves, because they want, like, players and critics and journalists alike to be, you know, shocked by this and be writing about it all over the internet. My only concern is, if it is, like, indeed too violent for a lot of these things, then is it going to get the right media attention? Is it going to, you know, I guess, get more sales because of that? And is also, is that what the entire game is writing on? Just being, like, incredibly violent just in the campaign? Because if that's their selling point, I mean, fair enough, that's something that they want to go for, but is that all the game has to offer? If its only goal is to be violent simply to shock people and get people talking about it, but doesn't really follow up with anything else, I think it's kind of a waste of time. The thing about MW2, why I think a lot of people remember that campaign, is because it only had, you know, it had a couple of shocking missions, and so that got people talking about it, but what also did was follow up with a pretty good story. By no means am I claiming that Modern Warfare 2 was some kind of, like, literary work of art, because, you know, it, it had its issues, but it's something that at least stuck with people and, and that people remember. And despite what the, you know, recent critics might tell you, I, I believe they can pull this off. In Infinity Ward's whole goal with the vibe they want to pull off with, probably the entire campaign or maybe just the game as a whole, is that they, they really want to give off this sense of uncertainty and also, like, uncomfortableness, because you, you never really know what's going to happen. It, it's kind of like early Game of Thrones, where you never knew, you know, what characters were gonna, was going to die at what time, because a lot of TV shows are predictable about that sort of thing. You kind of know where the arc is going to go with each character, but early Game of Thrones, you, you had no idea, and so I think that's what they want to go for in terms of their characters, but as far as, like, the overall vibe of the campaign, it, it seems like they want to have the most realistic war experience possible, and to do this, they studied a lot of live leak videos. Now, if you know what these are, you do your little bit, a little bit of digging on the internet, you can find real war videos that are taken, and the thing that you're going to notice about, like, these live leaks is that a, a, a lot of the time, like, the, the outcome that happens in these is not necessarily what you want or even what you expected. So I think it's this sense of uneasiness and also them going to be putting you into situations where it's not entirely cut and dry of what to do, like, what's the, you know, the, the right choice versus the wrong choice. Like, those lines are going to be blurred a little bit, and so I think that can make for a very interesting gameplay experience. Now, for those of you wondering, no, I have not played the game myself yet. I've had I, people that I know have played it, but that's pretty much it. And I've only, you know, heard peripheral information from what they've said and what, you know, uh, other information that's come out from the studio itself. So, unfortunately, I can't guarantee all this stuff firsthand, but it, it just seems like they're going to completely do away with the original COD campaign formula and try something new. And according to some people who have played it, people with PTSD should actually stay away from this game. And then also, apparently, the playtesters themselves cried. And maybe it is that brutal it's going to make the most tough people cry. And, and if it does, fair enough. But maybe this is just something that, you know, people are saying right now in order to bring hype and attention around the game. At the end of the day, though, it's not the level of violence that I'm concerned with. That That's not even like the main selling point of why I'm interested in it. I just want a, you know, a decently good story to be told. I want it to be designed well. I want it to be fun. And I think most of all, I want it to be replayable. And uh, accordingly, if everything is true, then this might have like a couple of multiple different endings, some different branching storylines, which would give you a reason to go back and, you know, replay a lot of these missions and run through the entire story again. Because if there's a near infinite amount of ways to do things wrong, then there's probably only a couple paths and a couple choices that you can do right, and uh, I, I think that'll give a lot of replay value to this campaign, and uh, if everything comes to fruition, then this will probably genuinely be the best campaign that we've seen in Call of Duty. I think one of the best ones that we've had before this is Black Ops 2. I was a, I was a big fan of the way that these storylines could branch. I know not everybody liked that, but you cannot deny that at least number one, it provided more replayability to this campaign and also some of the like storyline arcs were really good and some not so much but uh, depending on the choices you make all, all the stories were pretty decent so I, I kind of hope they branch off of that and, and go a little bit further with this campaign but overall I'm intrigued by this and I think we need to wait until we get our hands on the game I, I don't even think seeing gameplay of the campaign is going to do it justice it's going to be something that you're going to have to play through the story by yourself and, and really take it in to get that full experience but I want to know from you guys inside the comment section about what do you think this campaign is going to be like. It's pretty clear that this, you know, extreme level of violence in this campaign is supposed to be one of their main selling points, and that's how they want to get people talking about it, and if, if that's all they're riding on, then I think it might be in a little bit of trouble, but I think you could pull it off if it has a, a, a couple of backbones to fall onto, and so I, I really hope that's the case, but let me know in the comment section what you think the campaign is going to play like, and what you would like to see out of it as well. Now, when it comes to the multiplayer, that's something that I'm going to cover in a future video coming up, so make sure that you subscribe and stick around for that so you don't miss it, but 
as far as like just the overall story in the campaign, I wanted to discuss with you guys about what you're excited for and why, and, and just kind of get a grasp on why people are looking forward to this game so much, as it's gotten a lot of positive press recently, so there has to be a reason for that, and hopefully it can follow up when the game does come out. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, and uh, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe if you are brand new, and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, and peace out.